welcome to Life 2.0 Retirement Strategies. I'm Sarah Peterson here with Richard Pelletier, and we are talking about all things retirement. How are you today? So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> I love that answer. Right. You don't know what later is going to bring. Well, you always give us such an education, and uh, that is so important because most of us are not educated about our finances at a young age, and we're learning sometimes when it's too late. And as you always say with your six Ps, we need to start planning. Prior planning prevents pretty poor performance. You know I always wait for you to you do it. You got it. I know my cue. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about people who have been working with their financial advisor for many, many years, and they're not seeing the kind of progress they'd like to be seeing. They maybe don't have the best relationship with them, but they stick with them. Why do you feel like they do this? Well, part of it is the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. I'll be very honest about it. Uh, the fear of change, the unknown. Uh, so they may be somewhat feeling that they're not really comfortable the way they are with their current advisor, facing what they're facing in the future going forward. The person may have done an excellent job accumulating money, but now they're saying, wait a minute, I don't want to be in the stock market having all my, I've seen clients, 100% of the money's in the stock market. The only worse than that is 100% of their money is in the bank. <laughs> one's way too risky. The other one's not risky at all, but not producing any revenue. Balance, like the Karate Kid says, balance, <laughs> all right? So what you do is you start taking a look at these situations and say, listen, uh, you know, your advisor has done a good job. He sold you a lot of stock. He sold you a lot of annuities, blah, blah, blah. But there's no coordination with your CPA your tax planning. There's no coordination, certainly with your lawyer. You haven't seen her in the last seven years. Uh, you've acquired property in Florida. You know, uh, one of your kids is going through some real problems. There's no special re representation of how we're going to handle that child in the future. I mean, tell me what's going right here. And the answer is not much. So to those people who do have somebody that they're working with, you can be that second opinion and review these documents. I'm sure sometimes you find things that open people's eyes to what's been going on. When I have clients come in and I'm stacking their legal documents next to their financial documents, and I'm talking to them about their future and their plans and their goals, I'm saying, those are great objectives, but these documents are not coordinated and they're not going to help you. In some cases, they can actually hinder you. Uh, one of my biggest concerns for most of my clients going into retirement is will we run out of money? The second one is what happens if my spouse has a horrible prognosis, a massive stroke, and we're faced with incredible long-term expenses, how do I survive as a surviving widow on one-third of our assets? Uh, it goes on and on and on. Then they start taking a look at the tax situation. You watch the nightly news and what's going on in D.C. We're spending trillions of dollars like we used to spend millions of dollars. Do you know the national debt in the last 200 years, in the last Two quarters, we spent a quarter of what we spent for national debt in the entire history of this country. That's this crazy. is not sustainable, and sooner or later, they're going to have to raise the money. By taxing the poor people, I don't think that's going to go. We're going to tax the billionaires and the millionaires. Well, most of my clients are hardworking, successful, middle-class people. They've saved money in their 401k. Their wife has a nice IRA. The house is appreciated, and you add it all up, and they're worth a million dollars or close to it. By the sum it grows, they will be millionaires two years after they retire. So basically, who's the target of these taxation? It's not the billionaires. Trust me on that. You know, this is something we talked about earlier, but a million dollars sounds like a lot of money until you start breaking things down. The cost of long-term health care has, has gone up and there's and inflation and all the other things we're dealing with that a million dollars doesn't go as far as it sounds like it does. Well, let's take a look at somebody during the break talking to me about allocation of their assets and one of the cameramen. I'm saying, listen, you know, if you've got a million dollars in the bank and it's paying 1% interest, good luck on that one today, okay? What's the revenue from that? You got a million dollars, but it's not going to su support you very, very well on, on, on $10,000 a year. You got a million dollars in an aggressive stock portfolio that two years from now we have a major drawdown in the stock market. I lived through the dot com you know, in 2000, 2001, and 2. Let me tell you, 52% of that stock market dropped dramatically. Now you have a $500,000 portfolio. You think it didn't generate income when it had a million? How about half that? until it recovers, et cetera, et cetera. So again, taken holistically at the overall class of assets they have, the legal documents they have that or don't have, half the time they don't even have the legal documents. They don't even have a lawyer. 
I'm saying, listen, I am a lawyer. I'm never going to be your lawyer. You want a legal bill from me? Does it surprise you how many times people don't know who their beneficiaries are? They may have signed those documents so many years ago, or they never did. How about when you call the company and the husband and wife are sitting there, and I say, who do you have in the beneficiary on this $400,000 IRA? And it's the ex-wife. My favorite is I say, okay, the beneficiary is a current wife. Who's the contingent beneficiary? Suppose the wife died in an automobile accident the day before. Who's a contingent beneficiary? Blank, silence, nothing. Probate court, that's an expensive way to pass the assets off to your children because someone was lazy and they didn't fill in a, a line item on, on that particular form to open up an IRA 10 years ago. Or what's more likely, you have a custodian in your employer's 401k and they change it to a new custodian. They transmit all that data by electronically. And guess what they forgot to transmit? The beneficiary data. And my favorite of all, the beneficiary is a stockbroker. That the spouse really likes. The beneficiary is a stockbroker? Who's the owner? The stockbroker? Custodial owner. You gotta go to the stockbroker, Jenny Fleck, can I please have my money from my husband's 401k? What's wow. that all about? When I have an IRA, I wanna own it. The beneficiary, I want Tricia. If she's not there, I want it to go to my kids. So that stuff is not by accident. It's the six Ps all over again. Prior planning prevents pretty poor performance. You know, when, when I got married, uh, what is it, 15 years ago, we did all the estate planning. I mean, my husband's really, he's very good at planning, like you are. And we did the estate planning, and, you know, 31 years old. And since then, we've had four children. And I asked him the other day, because we keep having these conversations, maybe we should review this, because I remember who we left in charge. And the reality is, is that nobody can really handle our four children except for us. <laughs> but, you know, those are conversations. A lot happens in this course of time. You know, even in a year, a lot can happen. So reviewing it is very important. Well, let's get that another 15 years beyond that. Mm -hmm. Let's suppose your children marry. I've had very touchy personal conversations that are strictly you know, covered by ethics. Uh, and, and the dad will say, I don't trust my son-in-law. Mm -hmm. If this money goes to him, he's very dominant. He's going to you know, appropriate that money. He may grab the money, leave my daughter in lunch with my grandkids, and off he goes. I don't. What do we do about it? I mean, the conversations we have in my office, you would not believe. But again, you've got to open up that can of worms and say, listen, I can't cure a problem if you don't know there's a problem. Worse, if I don't know there's a problem, I'm walking around and doing things assuming you can't assume anything. What is a family situation? Family dynamics are critical in the financial planning and the future. The future for your spouse, your widow or widower, and how about the children? Are their marriages successful? Are they good with money? Uh, do they have special needs? Uh, I have clients with uh, children and they have Alzheimer's, it's tough. Well, listen, if any of these things ring true to you, which I'm sure that they do, now is the time to give us a call, 833-579-5500. We're gonna take a quick commercial break, but I want you to understand that this is complimentary. All you need to do is pick up the phone and call. Other advisors charge $1,000 or more for this, and Richard and his team are gonna take wonderful care of you, as you can see. Give us a call, 833-579-5500. Take a quick break, and when we come back, we're gonna talk more about the pitfalls of planning for retirement and the six P's, which I'm never going to repeat. As a good saver, you've been putting away money during your working years. Studies find that the biggest fear of retirees is running out of money. Market volatility isn't just the downward movement of stock prices, it's the size and frequency of change. The more dramatic the ups and downs, the higher the volatility. This can put savers who are newly retired or a few years away from being retired at greater risk. Today's generation of retirees is not receiving traditional pensions as our parents or grandparents did. Instead, we have retirement accounts such as 401ks or 403bs. These accounts typically expose your money to market risk. The last thing you want right before retirement is to lose a portion of the money you need for income. But how do you turn these accounts into a retirement income? Is it safe to keep all your retirement money sitting in the stock market? The last thing you want is to lose a portion of the money you need for income due to market loss. By working with a financial professional, you can learn how to turn a portion of your savings into an income stream for life and income for the life of your spouse if you're married. We all have moments in our lives when we wish we had taken action sooner. Don't let procrastination rain on your retirement parade. Act now before it's too late. 
please call our office to set up your no-cost, no-obligation retirement income review today. Hello and welcome back to Life 2.0 Retirement Strategies. I'm Sarah Peterson here with Richard Pelletier. And we're talking about you know, one of the biggest pitfalls is really we were talking before about married couples and how they don't understand how things are going to affect them if one passes or if one becomes incapacitated and they don't have the proper documents set up. Things can get really sticky. I would say my goal in an initial consultation with a couple is taking a hard look at their situation as I see them today. Is there something that's both important and urgent in what I see on that table? And I always go to the spouse with a very large IRA or 401k, I look at that statement and it's got John Doe's name on it, for example, and it's an IRA and it's six pages long. And I'll turn to the other spouse. I say, listen, let's play what if. What if your husband had a massive stroke? I always pick on the husband because the nuns told me not to pick on the girls, okay? But she's smart enough to understand this is not gender specific. They both have large IRAs. I'm trying to get across to them based on the paper and the documents that are set up at that point. She has no access to that husband's 401k to take money out to take care of him if he has a stroke. Well, every once in a while I'll say, oh, wait a minute, we got a wonderful lawyer and we've got this power of attorney. I say, stop right there. Where is that power of attorney? And they're going to say, it's in my safety deposit box. I said, really? I said, does the custodian at this insurance company or this broker firm know that this power of attorney exists? Well, no. I said, well, the lawyer never told you what to do with the document. They, do they execute the document. He gives you a bill. You pay the bill. Patch on the top of this. Good luck. Luck? Are you kidding me? No way. Uh, you've got to take that power of attorney. You've got to file it a custodian. So when the next statement comes out, it has two names on it. John Doe, it's his IRA, always bill as long as he's breathing. But the next name under that is going to be the wife's name, Linda Doe, comma, POA. Now she has access to that account two ways. She's going to get that account if he passed away unexpectedly. But now she can get into that account, sign her name as a power of attorney, and take money out to take care of him if he lands up in a nursing home or needs rehab at home. 100% uh, of the time, that's not done. Unbelievable. And this is an education we don't get unless somebody like you, a professional fiduciary, is giving it to us. We're not aware of these things. And it's a simple form that can be filled out and it, solve the this cures problem. are inexpensive. Half the time they have the document, and all I have to do is file it with a custodian. Now, sometimes what I find out, I said, I've read the document. I've asked you to file it, and I've read it before you came in for your second interview. Uh, and it's complimentary. And I'm taking a look at those documents. I'm saying, wait a minute. Uh, this document will not allow you to go into your husband's account and take money out. It limits you to, let's say, the gift tax elimi uh, uh, elimination of taxation for the gift tax, and that's 15000 bucks per year. You've got a half a million dollar account, and his nursing home is 15000 a month. We got a problem. The document's transmitting on this frequency, and your stockbroker's on this frequency. You're going to have a real problem. Just we need to amend this document. It's as simple as that. And now... I mean, what you just said really struck a chord with me. We have some family members that are, you know, in retirement and we're kind of transferring some things around and they're literally afraid of longevity. They're afraid, what if I live till 100? What if I live to 104? This is becoming an actual, I mean, it's a risk, uh, longevity, which we're, it should be a blessing, but it's, it's terrifying for a lot of people. Well, occasionally what will happen, a couple will come in and I'll say, well, we're going to spend a lot more money in the first 10 years. We're going to travel to Europe. We're going to buy that boat, whatever the case may be. But we're not going to spend a lot more money when we're 80 years old and we're sitting around watching TV and watching the grass grow. I said, excuse me, let me bring you into the realm of reality. And the reality is, at 84 years old, you're going to need to hire somebody to come in and mow the lawn for you. You're not going to be shoveling that driveway that's 150 feet long and 30 feet wide. You're going to have to hire somebody to do that. Uh, you're going to need some help. That's going to be far more expensive than a trip to Europe. Trust me on that. So we have to plan on that event. Now, if you die early, that's the end of that problem. But if most people are going to live much longer than they think they're going to, and that's going to cost a lot more money 20 years from now. You know, somebody like myself with four children, I think someday about downsizing and it's daunting to me because I think, well, I'm going to have to downsize my home, but then my children will hopefully want to come back and they want to come back with their children. And so I realize how this can tumbleweed and, and your needs 
you know, continue to still be somewhat substantial, even in your retirement phase? Well, a lot of clients are downsizing in my office right now. They're selling their homes unbelievable price. Sure. Now they have to go to a small house that they're not comfortable in half the time and spend twice what they would have done for that house 20 years ago. Absolutely. Uh, so downsizing can be traumatic. Change is always traumatic. But if you're living in a three-story house, no elevator, and you're 85 years old, trust me, you're gonna have a problem. We installed an elevator in my mother's in-law apartment years ago. Grandkids came over and they rode that like a, a ride show. They couldn't fight to get on that chair and go up and down grandma's uh, rider in, in that uh, hallway in that staircase. They had a ball. <laughs> it took myself and my sisters about two years to get dad say, come on, dad, you got to put that elevator. You guys fall down. We've got a real problem. So again, transition is difficult. It has to be managed and there are financial consequences of doing it and not doing it as well. The elevator was cheaper than selling the house and moving them into a house they didn't want to go to anyway. So for those people who are sitting here listening and thinking, no one's ever discussed these things with me. I have a financial advisor I've been working with, and maybe they're not feeling so confident with that advisor. You can be their second opinion. What can they expect when they come to see you? What they can really expect is an open, honest dialogue about what really is concerning them about the future. So when we have them fill out this form before they come in and see me, and I want them to tell me all the different things on this list that are little concerns or concerns that are keeping them up at night. When you go to a new doctor, they ask for all your medication, they ask for all your other pre uh, MRIs and x-rays. This is my x-ray. Very quickly, when they come into my office, I know that conversation is about what's concerning them. I have no agenda for the first meeting. I'm gonna talk about what's really bugging them. And when I say, listen, that small concern is like a black spot on an x-ray, it's operable, 100% survival. Well, we need to take care of that now. Mm -hmm. If we leave that alone, in 10 or 15 years, that is going to be an inoperable situation, and you're going to lose this asset, and your life expectancy and standard of living for your surviving spouse is going to be a whole lot different. Let's carve that out, correct it now, minimal cost, and let's move on. And just another reason why proc procrastination is really detrimental to your retirement planning, because if you can head off these things in advance, like you said, they're small problems, but they could grow over time. In a medical scenario, you have a lump sticking out of your neck. You know what procrastination is going to cost you. It's very apparent. It's very visible. I need to take care of this thing. On the other hand, you look at a financial statement, you don't see the lump. You don't see the black spot. I do. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, listen, let me tell you what this means to you and your plans for what you want to do in the future. We can cure this. And 98% of the time, the cure is very inexpensive because it's done early. You can change courses and land up in an entirely different destination if you're doing time is your friend. On the other hand, if you wait and wait and wait, and then we have to do it after the guy's admitted to a nursing home, that's going to be a costly little transaction. Trust me on that. Well, this process is relatively risk-free. It's complimentary. Other advisors charge $1,000 or more for this. Again, that phone number is 833-579-5500. Richard and his team obviously are going to take amazing care of you. The phone lines get very busy, so please have patience with us. And we're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about the six Ps in planning for your retirement. How confident are you in your current financial plan? Do you know with certainty how the recent market volatility will affect your future hopes and dreams? How much are you paying in taxes? And how much are you losing to unnecessary high fees? You didn't work to save this money so that you could spend your time worried in retirement. Now is the time to take charge of your finances so you can feel confident about your future. Call in during the next 30 minutes of today's show only to set up an absolutely complimentary, no obligation, full-blown financial review that will result in your own customized written plan. This is a $999 value that we're giving away complimentary to the first 10 people who respond. We'll start with a full-blown analysis of what you already have. By running a report to untangle how much you are currently paying in fees, how you're allocated for risk, and what it's costing to work with your current advisor. Next, we'll identify your goals. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Where do you want to go? And who do you hope to go there with? Is your current financial plan set up to get you there without mishap? Let's design a roadmap to create a financial plan you can follow with confidence. Get the piece that so many people are missing from their retirement. Find out how having a written plan can make a difference to your retirement dreams. 
Call now to schedule your complimentary, no obligation, full-blown financial review today. Hello and welcome back to Life 2.0 Retirement Strategies. I'm Sarah Peterson here with Richard Pelletier and we're talking about all the mistakes or missteps that can happen in planning for retirement. I'm sure you've seen a lot of unique situations just this year alone. <laughs> Given 2020 was so unique, uh, can you give us some stories of some things you've seen that maybe people could relate to? Well, again, COVID hit this country and a lot of my clients and families that no one could possibly perceive. So, a professional's benefit to you is taking what may appear to be a really disaster and working that to your advantage and making that disaster somewhat beneficial. Let me give you an example. I had a fellow who was highly compensated. When COVID hit his company, they laid off a lot of people. Highly compensated in January and February, but by halfway through that year, he was out in the street looking for work at 62 years old. 62, give me a break. He's going to be unemployed pretty much from this point forward, he thinks. Doesn't make any difference. The stockbroker, knowing he was unemployed, had to take money out. Why does he have to take money out? No, no longer have a job. Well, what it means basically is his tax rate went plummeting down. Before the end of the year, what he should have done in October 2020 is say, listen, let's have a conversation with your CPA. You know, you've got a lower tax rate right now. Should we start taking a chunk of dough out of this IRA and move it in kind over to a Roth and convert this lemon into a lemonade? Mm -hmm. uh, again, that's the kind of situation we look for when we sit down with people and say, listen, you know, yeah, you're out to work a little bit early. How do we make that to your advantage? Uh, you know, you're not eligible for Medicare at 65. How are we going to pay for the health insurance? COBRA is very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. What's the alternative? I call Jeff in. He heads up our Medicare division. I'm not going to shop for health insurance. That's Jeff's job. All right. Uh, we go into uh, Matt. Matt's job in a firm is Social Security. He's a specialist and educator and a certified financial educator. He lectures all up and down the East Coast about Social Security strategies. Do we have the wife go in? early, collect some benefits so we don't drain the assets on the IRA and create a taxable situation. There's all kinds of different maneuvers and suggestions, but you do that in response. Don't react to a horrible situation. I've had people take money out of the wrong account for the wrong reason at the wrong time. They're shooting themselves in the foot. Gainer, the Internal Revenue Service. You know, you mentioned 62, and the 62 of today's generation is a totally different story than the 62 of previous generations, right? That's still young, still got years ahead, potentially. I'm not getting on a tennis court with a 62-year-old guy. They're going to make me look pretty damn bad. Not that right now. A 72-year-old person these days. So today, people are living much longer. They're healthier. Let me give you an example. I've got 90-year-old clients by the handful. That generation smoked like a fiend World War II. Uh, they may drink a little bit more than most. Uh, exercise, are you kidding me? They went down to the mailbox and back. That was their exercise. Today, they're, they're jogging at 72 years old. They haven't smoked in 30 years. They drink moderately, and they're on that treadmill, and they're going to live long. Why? Because they know long life, healthy, is a whole lot better than a short life, dead. All right. So again, that longevity adds additional stressors to the portfolio that has to last a lot longer. Well, not in that market. What happens if the market takes a 20 or 30 percent drawdown and you don't have plan B, let alone plan C? Not a good prognosis. I'll tell you that right now. And, and is there ever a time that's too soon to start planning? No such thing. No such thing. No such thing. And I think what I see is the boomer is in their, their education of their children, and even in some cases their grandchildren. Uh, I, I was talking earlier show about an 18-year-old granddaughter. Well, again, uh, she was a lifeguard during COVID. What happened in the beaches during COVID the summer of 20? They shut them all down. She was not only eligible during her college break for unemployment, but the $600 per month as well. By the end of the summer, she had $11,000, and her mother said, you're not buying a new car, you're going down to Richard, and you're going to invest this money. Now, that's good training of a parent. How do, you, how do you get these kids to educate themselves? You make darn sure that they make good decisions. How do you learn about good decisions? You made a few bad ones. So these parents are doing a pretty good job of training the next generation. Absolutely. And we've seen this more often than not this year, people who are, you know, they've been on unemployment for a long time mm -hmm. and they don't want to go back to work because they're doing so well. So employers are having trouble finding, you know, good help. So it's Age a vicious discrimination cycle. is alive and well. Uh, again, 
you're 63 years old, you're on the street, you were highly compensated, which is one of the reasons they got rid of you. Mm -hmm. Now they're replacing you with somebody who's 30 years younger, gets half or a third the salary. What do they know? Not much, but again, when you're 63, it's awful hard to find. So you come into my office and say, okay, uh, I need to draw down $5,000 a month to make up for my standard of living two or three years early. I gotta really roll up my sleeves, sharpen my pencil, and work overtime. And I might have to say, listen, even though if you go back for a part-time job, make a little bit of money, that extra $1,000 a month is gonna make this thing work. Yeah. Not, it's not gonna work. For the viewers out there who are, who are perking up, there, some of these things are relating to them, which you know that they are, what can they do to best prepare for a meeting with you? I think what it comes down to, like any other important meeting, you prepare for it. Uh, you gather up your legal documents, I'll know what legal office you have, what legal documents you don't have. I am a lawyer, as most people know, but I'm never going to be your lawyer. I want to make sure that the lawyer you have and the documents he or she produces are relevant to the assets you own today. If that document was prepared 17 years ago and you've bought a home two years ago in Florida he doesn't even know about, or she prepared a power of attorney that's totally inappropriate for where your assets are. They're not in Massachusetts. They're in Minneapolis. They're in Florida. That's where your money is really being held by these different custodians. Uh, it's got to work, and you can make darn sure uh, that it will work. Uh, I take a look at the legal documents. I say, listen, this is like taking a family trip in your company car. You go out and buy a brand new spare tire, and then you choose to leave it in the garage. Where is this power of attorney? It's in the drawer. It's gathering dust, and none of the custodians know it even exists. There are some custodians that will not accept your lawyer's power of attorney. Richard, we are always running out of time, and it's such a pivotal moment. I want to make sure the viewers out there have the phone number again. That's 833-579-5500. Obviously, he's passionate about what he does. That's why we always run out of time. But it's always just a great education. I want the viewers out there to know that this is a complimentary process. It's a meeting. It's a cup of coffee. You've got a beautiful team of people. It's not just Richard. It's his whole team of people that are going to really spend time reviewing your finances and help you create that road to retirement so that your tire doesn't fall off on the side of the road, as you were saying. We try to be a one-stop agency to handle all your future problems. Well, it's always an education with you. Until the next time, join us on the road to retirement. We'll hopefully not have those pitfalls on the way. We'll see you soon.